call upon uh, the CEO of U Unity Homes, John Latham. John Latham is Executive Director of Unity Homes Limited, which is an, at, based at Tatu City in Kembu County. Mr. Latham is originally from UK and is now a successful Kenyan real estate developer here in Kenya. He will be speaking about opportunities that exist in Kenya and how uh, he has been uh, building affordable homes for everyone uh, to, to do to purchase at the Tatu City. We'll also share why he chose Kenya, why for investment, and not where he he he, he was, and how uh, and how also he, he will uh, entice the international investors to come in and benefit from what you could even be having, because there could be opportunities that you could also be having. So maybe th that is an opportunity. So we welcome John Latham, the CEO of Unity Homes. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's, he's Kenyan, so we greet. We go like this. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, so hearing Donovan's questions, actually, the questions he's getting getting asked, uh, it's actually quite, it's, you know, some of those things relate to my own experience. Uh, I first came to Kenya in 2006 um, on a tourist visa, and a bit like you were discussing, I, I met some people, I became, I made friends, uh, but I also saw, saw some people doing business, and I had some discussions with them. Um, I went back and finished my final year in university, and then I, I actually, I, I sort of cold called for a job here in Kenya. And I didn't get a job here in Kenya. They, they sent me to South Sudan, which I can assure you is not as good. Um, but I, I like a challenge. Um, and I went out to South Sudan and worked for, it was a, a Kenyan firm that was uh, building roads in South Sudan shortly after the, uh, the, the peace agreement in 2008. And from there, um, I worked there for two years, and then I came back to Kenya. And I really came to Kenya and Africa more generally for the adventure. But um, here I am 20 years later, and I've really stayed here um, for the people um, and, and the society. Um, I, when people ask me why did I invest in Kenya, it doesn't really work like that. I, I live here, and I love living here. So I work here, like I'm sure many people in the room are in the same situation, yeah? And um, there are major advantages to Kenya. Having seen many countries across sub-Saharan Africa, um, Kenya has tremendous human resource. Um, we really are blessed with, with good educational system, or at least a reasonably well-developed is getting better every year. Um, and stability, you know, we've had stability for decades, which many, many other countries haven't. Um, and the more I travel, the more I see other countries, um, the more I, I, love, I love Kenya more. And I, two years ago, became a Kenyan citizen. Um, and so I met a, met a man just like Donovan, <laughs> walked me through all that process. Um, and here I am today, I have a Kenyan family, um, so a lot of people looking to go the other way. It's, it also works this way, I think in almost exactly the same way. Yeah? Um, you know, emerging markets have different challenges. Um, you have to be much more of a jack of all trades here. You know, I have, you know, I've had to learn uh, almost every little element of my business. Whereas if I go and look at housing development in the UK, that same business has been broken down into maybe 30 or 40 separate professional businesses. Here, our business is vertically integrated to do all of that. Um, yeah, so that, that tells you a little bit about my journey. Um, let me talk to you a little bit about Unity Homes, um, which is, I guess, what I'm um, I see background here. Um, we, we founded the company in 2014. Um, I've been lucky to, to raise some capital um, with some, some people I'd done business with before. Um, I find it's, you know, if you prove yourself 
uh, raising capital is very much about can you prove can you prove reliable? Can you prove high in, with a high level of integrity? So I spent those first sort of half a decade in Kenya developing that reputation. And then when I started the business, um, I raised a modest amount of capital. And our first project was in Eldoret. I don't know if anybody has been to um, Unity Gardens in Eldoret on the way to the airport. Yes, over here. Did you enjoy? Thank you. <laughs> and that was our first project. Um, and that took about five years. Um, like anything, when you're starting something new in life, it took us, you know, there were ups and downs, there were things that, there were challenges. Um, Eldred is not the easiest place to develop houses, which I now know. When back in 2014, I thought that was a ter terribly good idea. Um, but to give you an idea, uh, that, was a, that was a billion shilling project. Yeah? Um, one of the projects you see behind us here, um, Unity West, was our second project. We came to Nairobi in Tartu City. Um, and that was maybe two and a half billion shillings. Rather than taking us five years, that took us two and a half years. Yeah. Um, and then our project Unity East, um, which is about uh, 640 two-bedroom apartments, about double the sign of Unity West. That's taken us about three years to build, and I think by the end of the year, we should be completing the sales on that. Um, so that that sort of gives you an idea of the trajectory of the business. And during that period, we've uh, I'm very proud to say that we've gone from employing, in the early days, there were just two people in my front living room, to today we now employ 1,500 people. Um, thank you. Um, and we've also gone pan-African. So we're now in Nigeria, in Lagos, um, where we're building um, another one of these estates, a bit like Unity East. Um, and that's going very well. Um, you know, Nigeria is a challenging market, but it's actually, I, I have a good story there so far. Fingers crossed. Um, so I'd like to talk to you about our products. We've essentially got three products at the moment. Um, we have over here, we've got Unity One. Um, this is a, a one bedroom, uh, mainly investment, although some people are buying them also to live in. Um, investment product uh, for young professionals and things like this. Um, it's got access to a swimming pool, a gym, a clubhouse, um, and all the, all the green areas that you have in Tartu City. Um, uh, and much the same you see here, this is, uh, this is Unity East. This is, you can see we're just, this is a fairly up-to-date photo, but I think the last row is just being completed in the next six months now. Um, now these are these really are beautiful apartments. If anybody's uh, would like to see them, um, Laban is here at the back of the room. If you just stand up, he will organise a visit for you. Um, I'd recommend you come and see the apartments. They truly are beautiful. I live myself personally here, and uh, I've always, f since the beginning of, start of starting the business, felt that it should be what I expect in life is what other people should expect. Um, so I live there and I really enjoy living there. And when things aren't right, um, I improve them. I think I've lived in 15 Unity homes now. Um, uh, so every time we move, um, I see a thing I haven't got right and I change that and I improve it. So it's a really well, well innovated product. Um, a very important thing for people in the room here is um, the KMRC. Has anybody heard of KMRC? Yes, wonderful. What does KMRC stand for? Yes, exactly. Um, so the Kenya Mortgage Refinance Company, um, what it is, is it's a, uh, a company that's been set up with the help of the World Bank, right? Um, to assist in providing cheap mortgages um, for the banking sector. Right, And at the moment, uh, if you were going to get a commercial loan from a bank today in Kenya, you would pay about 20%. Yeah? Um, yeah, that's correct. <laughs> um, whereas if you go through the Kenya Mortgage Refinance uh, um, thing, which is, for instance, our main partner is ABSA Bank, but there's many banks that are also offering it, KCB, um, Stanbic, uh, 
um, amongst others, yeah, um, you'll get a mortgage for nine percent, yeah, um, and I can't say how life-changing that is, yeah. Um, that's not nine percent for the first year, the second year. That's fixed for basically up, to, I think, up to twenty-five years. So as long as you want, yeah, unless anybody wants longer than twenty-five years, which uh, I, I don't think so, um, and. I equate it. It's a bit like, so let's take uh, Unity One here. I think they sell from about 5.7 million shillings, right? Um, now, if I told you that house was half price, yeah, um, I think guys would be biting my hand off. Yeah, I'd be wearing gloves. Um, now I can't do that. I'll be honest. <laughs> um, but with the help of the World Bank, the finance is half price. Yeah, um, and it. It really is, when you talk about 9% finance, it's, it's like a half price, price house. Um, so I talked to Laban about that, and he'll walk you through that. Um, but it really is an affordable mortgage. Um, and it's a wonderful thing that's been put together. Um, and I would suggest everybody finds out more about that. Yeah? Um, uh, personally, within my family, I think we've now taken five. I've gone to all my in-laws, everybody you can imagine who I can find who can afford a mortgage, and I've walked them through it, it is, there are sometimes financial no-brainers, and this is definitely one of them. Um, so everybody have a look at that. Um, at ABSA 9% mortgage, is it available to non-Kenyans? Okay, uh, let me start with the second one first. No, it's not. <laughs> um, uh, I think if it was, I think we would have an absolute flood of people. This is, uh, the World Bank has put this in. It is exclusively for Kenyans. So, although it might be the immigration side, you might be on the wrong side of getting to Canada. We're looking after you here with cheap finance, which the Canadians can't have. <laughs> uh, the, yeah, many, many people have asked me that question. Um, because it is, I think, in Canada, you've experienced low-rate mortgages and how, how life-changing it can be when you do have cheap, uh, cheap uh, credits on a house. Um, the second question, why? Yeah, let's talk about Unity 1. I guess Unity 1 and Unity, uh, uh, Unity East, very similar in terms of offering just at different price points. Um, look, uh, so all sorts of people rent our houses. We aim for very high quality living standards, yeah? Um, at affordable rents, right? Um, typically our occupancy runs at about 99%, right? Um, there's about 1% um, at any one time, maybe 2%, which is just that monthly churn, yeah? As people move out, people move in, right? Um, so that's very important um, in terms of when people are investing in our houses. Um, but also the location. When we talk about Tartu City, um, Tartu City is an amazing location. Yeah? Um, essentially what they've done is they, uh, some investors, some foreign investors, have bought about 2,000 acres um, in Kiambu. And they've put in place world-class infrastructure in terms of sewage, in terms of electricity, in terms of roads, in terms of security, yeah? Um, but also controlling the planning permission, right? So that people aren't building, you build your nice structure here and somebody doesn't build something funny, funny here, yeah? It's exactly, exactly like uh, in Canada, I imagine. It's, 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 everything is zoned and properly, properly implemented. And that drives property prices up, yeah? And we've seen that over, we've been there since 2018. And we've seen consistently, as Tartu City has delivered on their mission, of providing a world-class city, yeah? Um, that has driven rents up, yeah? We've, every year rents are going up at about 8% in Tartu City for our houses, yeah? Um, and it's meant occupancies are very strong, yeah? And having now lived in Tartu City, I think I'd find it very hard to live in many, many of the similarly priced suburbs of Nairobi, yeah? Um, but also Tartu City's, uh, it's a special economic zone, right? And with that special economic zone status, it's bringing a lot of businesses in. Yeah? So we've got over 80 businesses, um, both international and Kenyan, have now been attracted to Tartu City, which brings investment, which brings jobs. Yeah? Um, so yeah, everybody lives in our houses. Every, we've got Wageni from, from abroad, 
We've got uh, all the businesses in, in Tartu City. Um, also people commuting into town. Yeah? Um, it's, it's lovely to live there. There's a lot of green space. It's very secure. I'll go for a walk with my two-year-old daughter at nine o'clock in the evening without flinching. And it doesn't even cross my mind that might be a, a difficult thing to do. Yeah? Whereas there's very few suburbs in our, even Runda. Would you walk around Runda at nine o'clock with a two-year-old? Maybe. I, I don't live in Runda, so I don't know that answer, but I'd definitely be thinking twice. Whereas in Tartu City, I don't need to think twice. Yeah, um, Yeah. so that, that maybe answers that question. Is that... Yeah? Thank you, John. Uh, you can see there are a lot of opportunities that are there, and I think your question will be answered. We'll just do briefly. When the, you know, there are some times when your young people want to go to America, and they insist in going. Sometimes you don't know whether to allow them or not. So we have an, one example. A young person at that time insisted in going to America and whether he came back. So those of you who have uh, Gen Zs and, and Gen Alpha who want to go to America, let them go. They'll come back. Because we have an example here. Wenda Thuranira is the CEO of my space properties, Kenya entrepreneur, real estate investor, is a host of mind space. Mwangi, M Mr. Thuranira was formerly based in uh, Florida, USA, and is a successful where he specialized in commercial real estate and builds malls like my town mall in Karen. I think most of you could have seen that huge thing there. He's also in Mombasa. He will share opportunities available in Kenya you can take advantage of. And also, why did he come back? He went there as a young man, and he came back. Why? <laughs> yeah, that's the land of opportunity. Because we've got young people here, we are wondering, <laughs> will they go and come back? Yeah. Wanda Thuranira. Thank you so much. Good morning, everybody. I'm Jamboni. Uh, good. My name is Mwenda Duranera, the CEO of MySpace Properties, founder and developer of My Town Malls. And I'm glad to be here today, seeing all my old time friends here. Very happy. Kariboni, my fellow real estate player, we're glad to have you here. And of course, Lucy Jeffrey for organizing this, putting it together. I really appreciate it. So, who's Mwenda Duranera? So, Mwenda Duranera is uh, born and raised in Meru, went to Tali College, got a job at Air France, Air France closed down, went to America to do piloting. Then, uh, after doing it for a while, for almost six months training, after qualifying for my PPL, private piloting license, I realized this is not my thing. And all through my passion has been in real estate. Anything real estate, I'm always there. Any article, any show, like I once often I attended shows by Kina Robert Kiyosaki, Donald Trump, and uh, so many real estate players. And it's amazing. It's like music to my ears. Whenever you talk real estate, it's something I really like. So especially people living outside in the diaspora, is real estate is the best avenue for your investment because of four things. Number one, job creation. You know in Kenya, especially the Gen Cs, they are crying of jobs, correct? I'm sure each and every one on this room has somebody who's jobless. Nikweli, ama kuna ule kila mtu wakona kazi. So Real estate provides that opportunity. Since you find people working in, real, in any project, no matter how small, each and every site has like 20, 100 to 1,000 people every day. And this is what we are talking about, job creation back at home. Number two, high returns. If you're doing real estate, let's say in Canada, I'm sure for somebody to get up even to 15% return is hard. That's true. Kenya being a developing country, I mean, to get 30% return is almost obvious. And right now, with affordable mortgages, it makes a lot of sense. So return on investment, of course, is good in Kenya. And any investor, 
I'm sure people invest so that they can make money. Sindio? Or let's say anybody who invests for fun. I know people invest for three things. Like whenever I meet clients, especially the elderly ones, I give them the three options. For one, you can invest return on investment. Number two, return on equity, the money you invested. Number three, return on ego. Have you heard that before? <laughs> There's somebody who owns a big building with their name on it. If it makes money or not, they don't care. So, I mean, that's the least favorite. Of course, entrepreneurship, spalling entrepreneurship in Kenya, you see now with the job creation, there will be welders, there will be people selling windows, there are people cleaning companies, security companies, the entrepreneurship, it's spurred in real estate. And when you talk about real estate, anything, any business, apart from IT, starts with real estate. Someone will need a office, someone will need to live somewhere by the end of the day. So real estate is critical for any business. That's the foundation, that's where it starts. And then emerging markets. Of course, Kenya is an emerging market, and that is, uh, I mean, Africa is an emerging market. And this is where there is growth. Like, there's a big opportunity, it's a growing economy, it's a developing country. So it's very important we have more development. Actually, according to the research, by the year 2050, 50% 50 of Kenyans will be living in urban areas. So somebody thinking there are no opportunities in real estate, imagine, let's say Kenya has a population of 60 million. 30 million of those will be living in urban areas. Why? Because people are educated now. I'm sure those who come from the village like me, like right now, you want to set up a business or something for your cousins to do back at home. If you give them a jembe, they'll not touch it, right? Right now, there they want, they're educated. They want either Boda Boda or La Pawaso to do business. So still, there's a big opportunity in real estate going forward. Diversification, of course, to diversify your investment. If you have invested elsewhere, it's good to invest in real estate, especially in Kenya. Like when I was, when I lived in America, all the income I was making, I used to send it back at home and buy some plots, buy some properties, buy some land. See, finally, it's about personal fulfillment. When you do something for your home country, of course, as they say in Kenya, if you don't own a piece of land or property, you're not Kenyan. You have to own a piece of it for you to be fully Kenyan. So it's important to own something, and especially in your country. Like in America, I remember, of course, we started all the way like from uh, agent to developer to master developer. I mean, we were doing many big projects. But I was also feeling like now I'm doing this is one year. And this is a foreign country. By the end of the day, I'll not leave here. I'll go back home. And my people back at home, they need that investment dearly. It's needed here more than even it's needed. So with all my knowledge, with all my the experience I had, I thought now I come at, back at home and put in the experience here to develop my country, to uplift my people. Why did I choose real estate? For me, number one is passion. You'd see passion is what stays when the resources die out. Passion is what drives you to be able to go forward. Since if you're not passionate about it, you'll be frustrated. For example, if you're starting off as an agent, you might go for a year without selling anything. Correct? But when they start coming in, you'll get so many deals that they'll pay off for the lost time. So it's important to be passionate about real estate. Like me, I had, you had I. I I, I did piloting, but that was not in me. I did so many other jobs, which didn't make sense to me. But for me, real estate is my thing. Even if you call me in the middle of the night at any time, I'm ready to talk matters real estate. Finally, 
uh, talk about my town most. How many have seen my town in Karing on Langata Road? Ah, good, thank you. For those who have not seen, please pity up on Langata Road, opposite Karen Hospital. There is where we have our pilot project for my town, which we are doing multiple developments in different areas. On this particular project, we are on a journey of connecting retailers and the community. Basically, what we are doing is modernized kiosk. If you come, you see what we have done there, and we want to do it all over the country. Actually, our minimum would be 20, and we want to go up to 50, inshallah, God willing. So, of course, to raise the funds, to get the, to get the partners to work with on this one, it was not a walk in the park. Personally, I went, I was looking for funding for five years for this particular project. I went to all the banks in this country. Finally, I went even to NSE, Nairobi Stock Exchange, a book a program, trying to look for investors for funding to be able to do it, but it never happened. Good thing, it happened finally. I went to a friend of mine, Mr. Neil Samani, who I told him I needed a connection, somebody will give, him, give me money to do this project. So he looked at me and told me, what, how much money are you looking for? I told him, 20 billion. This guy removed his glasses, stood up and told me, Allah, Kijana, where do you want to take 20 billion? What do you want to do with it? So I had to explain to my, myself about what, I, what the idea was, what it was. And of course, owing to my experience, I know I've been a space provider for Naiva Supermarket for the last 11 years. So I have experience when it comes to malls, anything to do with shopping center, commercial real estate, we have in-depth experience. Of course, having represented neighbors in almost 60 places, trust me, I know everything to do with malls. But I'm still learning, though. <laughs> and with that, of course, we agreed, and we started with our pilot project in Karen. And those organizers of this event, thank you for coming to this hotel, since uh, my partner owns this hotel, AMS Properties. Thank you for supporting my partner. I appreciate you. Thanks uh, for being uh, an attentive audience. And um, thanks to Lucy for pulling this off um, while um, being all the way in Canada. And last I checked, she was still online. Um, uh, God knows what time it is in Canada now. It's, um, it's late and uh, she's still on. So uh, much, much thanks to Lucy. Um, uh, much, much thanks, uh, Sami, for, for hosting this, this program. And um, I'm looking forward to interacting with um, all of you um, later today, or if not, then uh, sometime online. On behalf of uh, Unity Homes, we are humbled to be part of this partnership together with Blue Water. Um, Lucy, thank you so much for having us and for hosting us. We are privileged, we are grateful, we are thankful for this opportunity. Lucy Jeffrey is our brand ambassador. She's based in Canada. So any Kenyan diaspora who would like to or who has the need to invest in Kenya and with Unity Homes, she's the one who then uh, introduces us to them. And Lucy has done her due diligence, I will tell you. She's tough. You all know her. You're all here by her invitation. So for her to agree to be a brand ambassador of Unity Homes, it means we have met the test of integrity, the test of delivering projects on time. And please feel free to come and see us. When you attend such events is when you get to learn and network, know new people, make new friends, forge business partnerships. That's why I'm very happy we have a Gen Z here. Please, next time you are called in such an event, come along with our friend or two. So that way we build a bigger network and a bigger community. For Lucy, thank you so much for hosting this event. I appreciate you. And on behalf of our AMS properties, thank you for hosting it. So thank you so much, Lucy, for this opportunity. I have learned a lot from the real estate guys and uh, Francis, and I look forward to working with you, Francis. So like I, uh, I want to thank you all for coming here today. I also want to thank Lucy for organizing the event. And... Uh, I wouldn't say...